Hi, this is Debbie from Crafty Hands and my able assistant, Mia. Mia, say hi to the crowd. <laughs> say hi, baby girl. Oh, you're so pretty. Right, are you going to let me get on? Right, so today, if you can see underneath the cat, the we've got some strips of fabric. we got some squares of fabric. Um, we got some samples so this will make this this will make this and this will make something like this and these two are spare for if we've got time to do some more so what are we going to do we're going to make some yo-yo flowers we're going to make some ruffles and we're going to make some button yo-yos now with yo-yo flowers the rule of thumb is the circle you cut out is half as big as the circle you end up with. So basically this is this folded over itself. Um, and I'll show you how we do that. So if you want a yo-yo flower bigger than this then you need to bigger a bigger circle so work out how big you want your finished yo-yo flower and double the size of your circle basically is the rule of thumb so that you can because I thought this one would make a pretty decent size yo-yo flower but it was a tiny one so I shall cut out my fabric I've just drawn around some found objects I think this was a jar lid and this was a lid of a um, a storage jar like pasta storage or something like that so I'm just literally now I don't have any tailor's chalk but it might be better for you to see if you're drawing on fabric to get tailor's chalk that is on my wish list but I haven't got to it yet so and can I say fabric clusters so that's that one cut out ready let's do the other one quickly doesn't take long to cut them out but I wanted to show you the comparison in size of the size fabric you're likely to need so I hope you're all doing fine um, I'd like to have a shout out to Alison Alibaba my bestie who's been supporting the channel right from the start thank you very much Ali and uh, look forward to catching up with you soon so we have our circles we don't need to do anything with the strips so we're going to work on the, the yo-yos to start with now it doesn't really matter what color fabric you use because it's not really going to see be seen um, some people like to fold the edge as they're going round their clusters to have a neat edge but I tend to put buttons on mine um, and the edge doesn't really fray and I, I think it gives it a bit of character with a you know a bit of a rough edge so your choice if you want to wrap and fold and sew as you're going round then that's fine but I tend to just um, so about a quarter of an inch from the edge and it's just a basic running stitch all the way around the perimeter and make sure you've got a knot on the end of your cotton I've doubled up normal cotton um, to give me a little bit of strength with it and I'm using a, 
a brighter colour so you can see where my stitching is. So it's just a few stitches at a time, pull it through. Few more. Doesn't take long to go round. Something to do, you know, cut up circles, draw your circles. You can, you know, mass make these um, different colours, odd scraps of fabric, whatever circle fits your fabric. Um, and then you've got a variety of sizes to use on your projects. What can they be used for? They can be used for brooches, possibly decorating hair clips um, on your journals, front covers. wouldn't suggest inside journals because they can be a bit bulky, but certainly for decorating the outside of journals or notepads and things like that. Um, so that's a couple of uses. The button ones can be used as buttons if you want to. Um, trying to think of other uses for them just to look pretty really they're lovely to have in a tub and just sort of appreciate them don't have to have a purpose um, and just enjoy making them and then one day you'll come and think oh yes I've got just the thing for that project and it'll all be ready for you clothes uh, yeah, you could decorate clothes with it. Um, maybe round a neckline or something. Um, you mentioned cards. Cards, yeah. The, the, the small ones, big, big ones would make um, nice flowers if you um, put them on a, a stick face to face or some, you know, back to back rather. Then you could make them into like flowers on a stick um, depending on your colours and then it would be nice to have a raw edge and maybe not bother with the button because that way you know you've got a bit of texture in the middle as if you had some seeds so what I'm doing now I've got all the way around the edge so I've got back to my knot believe it or not and I'm just going to hold the, the thread of my knot and pull in and keep pulling round and, until you've got all the everything gathered and what I might actually do is pull the knot out a bit and then go through the loop of the thread and that way it's not going to pull through completely so you keep going until you've got a an odd shaped little bundle attached to your thread and you just tease out the edges flatten it out try and get your ruffled bits centralized pull it in a bit more if you need to and pull out the folds there we go that's looking a little bit flatter now so that's where half and half takes up so it folds over upon itself now what I like to do to finish this part off is just go back over the pleats one way come back through part way along go back over and just feed it through hold the pleats into place do that a couple of times and then you've got your your pleats held into place and then I will come onto the side of the fabric and 
just cast myself. Do that a couple of times so it doesn't slip, and I can trim my fabric. Okay, so you've ended up with a nice flattened out yo yo flower. Now you can choose to put a button on or not. I like buttons on them because I think it just finishes them off nicely. So I have a selection of buttons here, and I'll go through my process of how I choose oh that was a needle in my finger um, how I choose what buttons to use so size matters it does on this instance so this one is way too big so nothing that sort of size this one is way too big because you want the actual size to now this one's quite about the right size and it's actually not a bad match but it has a shank on it now yo-yo buttons no yo-yo flowers with a shank button are not easy to sew on so that's a thing to think about now you could cut the shank off and glue them on that's an option but the shank brings it too high above now you could try and sink the shank into the center bit but I think it still raises it too high above the edge of the flower um, so shank buttons are not ideal for yo-yo buttons so too big just the right size but with a shank so we need to find this similar sort of size button that's too big without a shank on it see. Oh, that's too big I'm hoping we've got a selection in here that will now this one that's quite pretty so we've got the, the grey and I think pink and grey go really together, really nice together. That's not bad size for size. Which has already got thread in it. So if you've got a button that's already got thread in it, you could just glue the button on um, with your fabric glue or something like a glue gum that's hot, hot glue. Um, but I'm just going to remove the what's in there and sew it on. So if I can, might have to snip in there. There we go. So that is the perfect button for this. Aha! Uh -huh. We've got him. It was stubborn, but we won in the end. Okay. Here we go. Are you coming out this side? Or are you coming out that side? But you're coming out either way, so make your mind up. That's it, we got you. You go over there out the way, and we're going to put you on here. Okay. So you hold your button in the center come up from the back so that's where you because if you're going to use the yo-yo flowers the likelihood is you're going to stick them down from the back so that's where your rough work's going to be so you come up from the back making sure you come up to the middle through the middle rather than halfway along you can either go crisscross so from there or you can do two stripes i'm going to go crisscross but you have the options with the four hole buttons to, to do whatever patination you like. I'm going to pull, go through this to join up my knot and come back up through my other hole. 
long side and then crisscross you don't need to go over too many times I do two or three rounds on that to hold it in Trying to make sure that your cotton at the back is not is pulled through properly. You don't want sort of loops of cotton on the back of it. Right, where are we going from here? We're going back down there. I think that should do it. That's all nice and tight. And then go through a couple of times and through ourselves. come off the needle but that's fine we finished so that's good that will be a threads down there that's a bit we don't need anymore so that's your yo-yo flowers now this one will be done in the same manner but it's a little bit more fiddly pulling them out the side pulling it out the side because it's so much smaller but it works the same same process. Now, let's put my needle so I don't lose it. I've got plenty of cotton threaded up. That's a bit short. Get rid of that one. Okay. Your turn. Okay. You can come centre stage now. So, a ruffle. Basically, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do the blue because we've got a green one already. Um, it's just a matter of folding your fabric to whatever, um, you can do deep folds or you can do little folds. I like little folds because it gives more texture. So you concertina really and you do one fold at a time and hold it down so this is what it looks like on the back so that's your fold on the front so once again come up from the back and do one or two stitches depending on the the length of your fold and we'll do one stitch and then before you do the next stitch you tuck let me get this in the stitcher you tuck down and under for your next fold now again it's surprising how much fabric you use doing the ruffles and the um, yo-yo flowers simply because they double over themselves so a big long bit of fabric like that will make a short ruffle now you can keep going with and add more bits onto the end to make a longer ruffle if you want to but I like them that um, more of rather than edge edging a page I might like them more as a a cluster type size rather than a, a full length size but you can do either so basically I'm just going down folding going down folding now you can either leave that end dangling or you can do a smaller fold just in the middle and let the edges dangle in the side just about get that fold in and when you're coming from the back make sure you've got your folds pinned down from the back as well so it's come up quite small but well formed shall we say so I'm just doing an extra stitch at the bottom to hold it in place and then we can finish it off 
Okay. And again, small stitch, go through the loop and pull, small stitch, go th round the loop, uh, round the needle and pull. Going through the loop and round the needle is the same difference. It's just So depending on the, the width of your folds depends on how much fabric you have. Um, so this one has got that bit dropping down the, the front there, like a little um, flag type thing. And to decorate these sort of things, you can again use more buttons or you can use sequins. beads. Now I did have some oh, we go, some silver beads here which I thought I might decorate with so let's pop these out. Do the packet that would help, wouldn't it? So we've got five little beads here. Hopefully they don't roll too far away. Pop them on there. Now you can lay them out roughly so that you can see how many you're going to need. You have one on each pleat. Or if we did them on the green one we could space them out alternate pleats which I think is what I'm going to do this would suit a button better so maybe something like that you got the dark blue and white the light blue and white and a button in the middle or oh, a rummage what have we got in here when we come over to the buttons now this is where you could use a shank button so that that would be quite pretty I think that one um, oh that one might not be look nice a sort of a, a blue snake skin mm. Yeah, although you sort of lose it, so you need a, a darker. So when you're, you're auditioning your buttons, shall we say, so would an orange go? No. Would a white and gold go? Not too bad, but not big enough. So you, you can get a, an idea, get your eye in as to what sort of would work. Do you want a pattern? Do you want a plain? That type of thing. But we're going to do the beads on this one, so let's pop them over there. One at a time. We can bring them across. So I like to start at the top. I want to secure Oh, I didn't turn light and the thread <laughs> went straight through. It helps to tie a knot in your thread, apparently. Okay. Try again. So, come from the back, do a small stitch and secure your thread going through the, the loop the knot's made. And then your fabrics, uh, your cotton's secure. Come back up. Now I'm hoping that my needle is thin enough to go through the holes in the beads because I didn't test it. But it looks like we're okay. So you put your bead through your cotton and you want to make sure you don't bring your cotton too far away. You want it level with the end of the bead so you want to make sure your beads right up tight 
and put your cotton down next to where the end of the bead will be otherwise you're going to have your bead wobbling about on your cotton you want it nice and secure so there we go we've got that nice and secure come up behind the button of the bead and go back through and then that makes sure your bead is not going to fall off because you've got a double thread through it okay go back down and then you can come back up where you want your next bead so I want my next bead about here and repeat the process put my next bead through I'm a bit belt and braces on this because you probably don't need to go back through again but I'd, I like to just to make sure um, the bead is nice and secure on my fabric because it, it, it can so it will get a bit out of place otherwise. And don't pull too tight with your cotton at the back when you leap from one um, bead to the next because otherwise it will squish it up. Make sure that's all nice and straight before you go on to your next one. Make sure your threads aren't tangling it back and front and pop down to the next one. And when I get make round to making some more of these, um, when my filming schedule allows it, I shall have some available in my shop if you don't want to make your own. And that's Debbie's Crafty Hands Etsy. And we're getting there. So you can see it's a nice effect um, going down. It just gives a little bit of a, a decoration without overpowering it. Um, another thing that you can use is those strips of um, gems. So the things that, like this that surround the, the lid here. Um, they're quite nice to sew down. That's, that's it. That's what I'm after. So th these sew down quite nicely. As I say, sequins are quite good as well. So, you know, see what suits the particular project you're doing. Or what takes your fancy. And as I say, sometimes I put them to one side and in a little jar, um, in a jar, in a, a tub, and then I'll come to them and think, oh, that's just the thing I need for this project or whatever. And so it could be sitting there for ages and ages, and then all of a sudden I'll need to use it. Um, or have something to use it with. So, last bead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nearly done. I think I've just got enough thread to finish off. finish off it's a bit messy on the underside but nice and neat and tidy on the other side Ooh. 
again. Now, if your knots come undone, remember you're probably going to be gluing this down anyway, but you can just put a dab of glue on the ends and that should stop any fraying of your knots. Okay, so just a, a quick recap. Yo-yo flowers, you need the circle twice the size to be cut out as you want your flower. Hence, this size makes this size. Your ruffles, you want a long strip if you want a full page ruffle or if you um, working on a shorter strip then you will have more of a, a fabric cluster type size now this was roughly this size and it's gone to probably about a third of the size of the actual length of fabric so I'll leave you with that little bit of eye candy and much love See you in the next one. Bye-bye.